again everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and I wanted to welcome all of you to episode 1 of Tales of the Iron Legends. In this episode we will be discussing the very underrated Richard Dick Du Bois, a bodybuilder that had a very short career in bodybuilding, only around 5 years, but accomplished so much in that amount of time and left a lasting legacy that we can still see to this day. In reality he really should have represented the second coming of Steve Reeves. But due to various decisions in his life, he ended up uh, abandoning bodybuilding before the 1960s even started. So it's really a question what he could have accomplished if he'd stayed in the sport. Additionally, he really exemplifies a rags to riches story. He grew up in a very poor household with not much, but made the best out of it by turning to sports and athletic endeavors. And finally, took to bodybuilding as his professional career prior to having a small acting career and doing various other things. So in this video I will be discussing more in detail about his life and if you stick around at the very end I'll actually be showing you the routine he used to win the 1954 Mr. America competition which was his biggest win of his career and what he's most known for. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you have any questions regarding this gentleman or any recommendations for future video ideas, just leave them in the comment section and I'll make sure to get back to you. But I hope you enjoy this video. Dick Du Bois was born in the Bronx in 1933. His early life was very hectic as he grew up relatively poor and impoverished. Due to this, he was eventually given to an orphanage where he spent much of his youth. To cope with such adversity, Mr. Du Bois took to sports. Due in part to his insane commitment to perfection, Dick Du Bois all around excelled in competition. Some of his accomplishments include winning the Long Island Championship in the 100 meter swim and boxing in the Gold Glove Tournament that year. At the age of 16, young Dick Du Bois met Dominic Giuliano, an avid weightlifting enthusiast local to the area. Like a sponge, Du Bois immediately began learning as much as he could about weightlifting and bodybuilding. Initially, Mr. Du Bois possessed a slender appearance and showed no special qualities. Through sheer determination and hard work, Mr. Du Bois transformed his physique into what you see here today. Destined for greatness, Mr. Du Bois was now 6 foot 1 and 225 pounds, possessed a 30 inch waist, and had nearly 19 inch arms. His best lifts included a 275 pound behind the neck press, a 500 pound squat, and a 425 pound bench press. He also was capable of curling 200 pounds. His early competition wins include Mr. New York State, Mr. Atlantic Coast, and Mr. Capital District. These smaller competitions were nice, but they surely did not satisfy Mr. Du Bois for long. He eventually entered into the 1953 AAU Mr. America competition, where he placed a respectable second place to the icon Bill Pearl. Mr. Du Bois then moved to Southern California to train with the legendary George Eiferman. Under the guidance of the Iron Master, Du Bois improved his physique enough to finally win the Mr. America competition. He was the youngest man to ever do so. He also competed in the Mr. Universe title in 1955, where he placed second. Du Bois also dabbled in acting, appearing in films like Athena alongside the enigmatic Steve Reeves. In 1957, Mr. Du Bois finally won, won his final competition in bodybuilding, the 1957 Mr. USA competition. Shortly after, Mr. Du Bois announced his retirement to bodybuilding and took up ministry. He was officially ordained as an evangelist minister some 15 years later. An academic, Mr. Du Bois regularly studied philosophy and theology. He served as a pastor at Gospel Lighthouse in West Los Angeles for 19 years until his death in 2007. He was 74 years old. Considering his quick rise to stardom in the 1950s, it is quite shocking to learn of his death in relative obscurity. Regardless. I feel we should acknowledge this forgotten icon and give thanks for the legacy he left behind. On behalf of the community, here's to you Mr. Du Bois. Thank you for your eternal contributions to bodybuilding. In the following slide, I will show you all the routine Mr. Du Bois used to build his Herculean physique and win the 1954 Mr. America competition. 
For those that are curious, you can find Dick Du Bois's Mr. America exercise routine in the December 1954 edition of Strength and Health magazine. It is mentioned prior to actually showing this routine that this is an advanced exercise routine, not for the beginner. Just like many of his contemporaries, like Bill Pearl, Steve Reeves, Reg Park, this routine is performed three times a week and is a full body exercise routine, hitting every muscle group that's necessary to build this kind of physique. Mr. Du Bois performed three sets of each exercise, 10 repetitions each. The only exception was the squat, where he did three sets of 15 repetitions, so he kept his, his working his legs at higher repetitions than the rest of his body. The routine is as follows. The first exercise is the press behind the neck, which is your standard behind the neck press with a fairly narrow grip with a barbell, of course. The second exercise is the supine press, which is similar to a bench press. It is a bench press, but his variation, you can see him hitting a vacuum. He has a flat back and he has his feet slightly elevated, so there is no leg drive. The third exercise is the parallel bar dip. It is your standard dip, but he's doing it on a really cool homemade um, pipe dip station attached to the wall, which is just absolutely classic. The fourth exercise is the squat, but I would say this is more a deep knee bend because his knees are far over his toes, his heels are elevated, and he's, he's standing on the, or squatted on the balls of his feet. And you can see the weight's not too, too heavy, and he would do 15 reps of this, so it is not your standard squat. I assume you could also do it with a block under your feet, but that would eliminate the stabilization factor. The fifth exercise is the standard bent arm pullover with a barbell. The sixth exercise is real cool. It's a modified dip. And Vince Gironda actually liked this exercise as well, especially if you weren't capable of doing a standard dip to do the modified dip. So it's, it's really awesome to see it being used here as well. The seventh exercise is a curl, a barbell curl to be specific here, but it's your standard normal barbell curl. It's incredible to think Mr. Du Bois could do over 200 pounds on this exercise. It's, it's wild to think. The eighth exercise is the sit up. He has his legs pointed straight out, so his legs are flat. They're not, they're not in a 90 degree angle um, with his knees in the air. So it's really like a full range of motion crunch more than a sit up. The ninth exercise is the leg raise, which is just a staple in every, every Silver Era bodybuilding routine. They all did leg raises for abs, so it's no surprise it's here. The tenth exercise is the alternating press with dumbbells, which is essentially a shoulder press, a dumbbell shoulder press as we would know it today. And he's got his his knuckles inwards on this uh, particular variation. The eleventh exercise is the rise on the toes, which is a calf raise on a fairly primitive calf raise machine. Uh, you could also do this leaning against a wall with a belt and chain attached to some weights. I've done that before, and it pretty much mimics this machine to a T. And the twelfth exercise is the chin up behind the neck, and this is a fairly basic wide grip chin up and that's pretty much the entire routine i say pretty much it is the entire routine and it's quite a beefy routine i would guess this routine would at least take you an hour 30 minutes likely for most people over two hours to complete and even still i think it's definitely worth giving a try dick du bois had an, an incredible physique very similar to Steve Reeves. I'd say of all the bodybuilders during this time, he is the most similar to Steve Reeves in structure. And the routine is actually very similar to Steve Reeves as well, because he too would start off with press behind the neck. Honestly, they're very similar routines. There's uh, some differences. He definitely focuses a lot more on chest than Steve Reeves did with three, essentially three chest exercises. But it's really cool to see another one of these old routines. I, I I never get tired of seeing them, and it always gives me something new to try. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and of course, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future video ideas, let me know in the comment section below. But I hope you all enjoyed this video, and until next time, this is Forgotten Fitness, signing out. Bye-bye.